will get up to $200 off accessories with the purchase of a Peloton Shred. Accessories like non-slip grip resistance bands, a heart rate monitor, yoga blocks, and more. Take your workout to the next level. Hey, Todd, thanks to Andrew Doyle. destroyed and an apartment complex heavily damaged at least 20 people and hurt two of them critically meteorologist jeremy grams at the national weather service says it could get worse during the day on wednesday the tornado threat will increase and we're expecting the potential for um tornadoes some of those could be strong again um from basically southeastern louisiana everything will kind of shift eastward so southeastern louisiana southern to southeastern mississippi and then uh, perhaps some of that threat moving into uh, parts Southwest Alabama. Less than three days until government spending authority expires, a short-term fix is now in the works. Lawmakers will likely approve a one-week spending bill, buying more time to put together a nearly $2 trillion omnibus package that would fund government through the fiscal year. And I expect an omnibus will contain priorities that both sides want including more funding for Ukraine and the Electoral Count Act. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer speaking after top Senate Republican Mitch McConnell also lent his support to a long-term spending bill despite objections from many House Republicans. Fox's Jared Halpern in Washington. The Federal Reserve Board concludes its two-day meeting in the nation's capital today, likely announcing another interest rate hike predicting a half-point increase after Tuesday's consumer price index showed prices in November were 7.1% higher from a year ago. It's down 7.7% in October. President Biden predicting it'll continue to get better. I know it's been a rough few years and for hard work in America and for small businesses as well. And for a lot of folks, things are still pretty rough. But they're bright spots all across America. America is listening to Fox News. Professional parts people will even install your new wiper blades for free. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts or visit O'ReillyAuto.com. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Your happily ever after is waiting for you in the Chrysler Pacifica and Pacifica plug-in hybrid. With available all-wheel drive, Pacifica helps handle adverse conditions like magic. And with a plug-in hybrid, it can help your range anxiety disappear. Make your drive even more enchanted in the Chrysler Pacifica. And watch Disney's Disenchanted, now streaming only on Disney Plus, rated PG. Disney Plus subscription required must be 18 plus to subscribe. If you to total range with a fully charged battery, actual mileage may vary. At University of Phoenix, we know you've had a master's degree on your mind. But did you know that your experience can help you earn a competency-based master's in less than a year for under a Cryptocurrency CEO Sam Bankman Freed remains jailed in the Bahamas after his arrest Monday on bank fraud charges. A judge in the Bahamas denied bail, saying that he was a flight risk. The judge also wants Bankman Freed to remain in the Bahamas until February 8th, and Bankman Freed's lawyers say they will fight U.S. extradition. Meantime, the charges include wire fraud, bank fraud, securities fraud, and conspiracy to commit campaign finance violations after handing out tens of millions of dollars in illegal donations. Fox's Trace Gallagher, the new court-appointed CEO of FTX, the crypto f uh, firm that uh, Bankman Freed founded, told a congressional hearing on Tuesday this is just plain old embezzlement. More lawmakers are joining a push to ban TikTok as long as it Chinese company owns it. Republican Senator Marco Rubio introducing a bill Tuesday that would ban the popular social media app over concerns that China could be using it to spy on Americans. TikTok is owned by Chinese parent company ByteDance. While ByteDance is not officially state-owned, it could potentially be compelled to hand over information to the Chinese government. The app has more than 100 million users in the United States. Several states have already moved to ban government employees from using the app on state-issued devices. Anna Eliopoulos, Fox News. What could be the last execution of 2022 is scheduled for Wednesday evening in Mississippi. The state's scheduled to lethally inject Tom Lowden 
Jr. for the kidnap, rape, and murder of a teenaged waitress in 2000. He had pled guilty to that crime. Oregon Senator Kate Brown, in her last month in office, has cleared out the state's death row. She's commuted the death sentences of the 17 remaining condemned inmates. They'll serve life in prison without the chance for parole. Oregon hasn't conducted an execution in a quarter century. I'm Jack Callahan. This is Fox News. Laura, what's going on tonight? Wait, were you at the White House today for that big celebration? I didn't see you there. No? <laughs> I saw some other anchors there, but uh, I didn't took see me you. a second, and it was like, was there a Christmas party I wasn't invited to? Well, no, I, I was, was a party there. there. Oh, okay. I, I was... <laughs> I was not there for the show. Uh, Cindy Lauper's day, better days are behind her. Uh, I've never <laughs> seen a drag queen show. Um, well, I don't care if people go to them, but I don't really think it's uh, age appropriate for kids in school. Oh, that's a, me old fashioned. That's you are very old. I can't believe you would just have to be so judgmental. All right, Hannity, great to see you tonight. As always, I am Laura Ingram. And this is the Ingram Angle from Washington tonight. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis will be here in moments. But first, real science bites back. That's the focus of tonight's angle. Will Anthony Fauci ever leave the national stage? He's like Cher, whose farewell concert her whole tour never ends. She's always promising an end, never ends. It's been four months now since Dr. Lockdown announced he was retiring, and he's now still talking. This time about how others shouldn't be allowed to talk. The people who spread the disinformation are very energetic and seem to have nothing else to do but do that. So we've got to be out there, scientists and the general public and those who understand the facts, and get out there and talk about true and correct information. Whoa, 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 whoa. True and correct information? Now that's rich coming from him. The elfin egomaniac who lied about masks, feigned ignorance about the Wuhan lab, downplayed the protection of natural immunity, and uh, ignored the benefits of things like vitamin D3 and other antivirals. How does this individual, who still defends the school closures, somehow believe that he has standing, standing alone, to lecture anyone else about these matters? Is he delusional? Devious? Or both? You decide. It can be dangerous to the health of the nation when disinformation dissuades people from making use of what could be life-saving interventions like vaccinations, wearing a mask, and abiding by good public health practices. That would be horrible to see people suffer and die because of disinformation. As usual, today's liberals are not interested in an open conversation, and they certainly don't want to ever have to defend their views. For instance, we've known for a long time that the COVID shot does not stop either transmission or infection, and that its true lethality for those without pre-existing comorbidities is about that of the flu. So why did Fauci and his team get this so wrong? What's the argument for ever mandating the COVID shot and the boosters, given what we now know? I mean, well, it worked out for the CEO of Pfizer, who's now a multi-billionaire with his company Immune, speaking of immunity, from lawsuits over vaccine-induced injuries and deaths. Worked out great for him. If we had a press that actually held the powerful in check, they would have spent time investigating the incredible arguments made by our frequent guests, people like Drs. Jay Bhattacharya, Peter McCullough, Harvey Risch, Stephen Smith, and others. Instead, the regime media seems fine with ostracizing, ostracizing and even silencing these people. And rather than blaming arrogant public health officials for their own PR problems, they blame those who got the COVID strategy right. Are we developing an anti-science yeah. uh, well, in society? The answer is yes. The shot would be a terrible blow to society and I believe to our democracy if all of a sudden people say, well, what's the use? There's so much untruth out there, we might as well not even push back on it. Democracy. Of course, the simple truth is we're not anti-science at all. We're anti-fake science, where medical professionals fail to adhere to basic principles, fail to follow the scientific method, instead use a health crisis to promote a political agenda. A new normal. Well, thank God we had some state leaders who saw lockdowns for what they were. Sick power grabs. Including Governor Ron DeSantis, who just hosted a roundtable of some of the most important...
minds out there. Those who had the courage to dissent, regardless of threats or intimidation or the chance of being blacklisted by big tech. The centrally important issue that caused the problems is that we silenced people from expressing their thinking, qualified people from expressing their thinking. was absolutely abysmal. When you have censorship, the kinds of suppression of the voices, the, the uh, essentially, uh, effectively, a social credit system, demeaning people with, with the CDC or whatever, you're going to get bad decisions that don't get checked. Well, given how much damage the lockdowns and the mandates do to children, our businesses, our military, and our police, we need a full account. Public health. 
health and safety officials. Well, let me tell you this, Laura. The authoritarians were the ones that wanted to mandate the vax on people. I protected people from having that happen and made sure Floridians could make their own choice. The authoritarians wanted to institute a vaccine passport system, almost like a social credit system, so that people who dissented from this would be marginalized from society entirely. We rejected that um, and we banned it. So we were, from the very beginning, you know, helping people make their own decisions, uh, but not using either the coercive power of the state or allowing big corporations uh, to condition those choices. And so, look, at the end of the day, um, what we're looking for is to provide truth, to provide accurate data, and provide uh, uh, accurate analysis. And we had a great researcher from Denmark. You know, Laura, Denmark does not allow people under 50, unless they have pre-existing conditions, uh, to get the MNRA shots because they've analyzed it uh, and said that the drawbacks outweigh uh, the benefits. But they've also looked at all cause mortality, and the researcher found that, yes, in some age groups, there was a decline in COVID mortality after taking these, but there was then an increase in other types of mortality. So why have we not seen big declines in excess mortality uh, since these things have been introduced? restrict. 